Welcome back to Thurlis for the Munster Hurling final replay between Cork and Waterford. Waterford leading Cork, remember, by eight points to four. Cyril Farr, Tomás McCahey and Sherlock Nan here with me in our Thurlis studio. A four-point lead, Cyril, is nothing really in hurling, but the one thing that will concern Cork perhaps is the fact they did a lot of hurling there and still find themselves behind in the match. Yeah, Michael, it's a replica of last weekend, overcrowding the game, but like, it's unreal to think Cork have played six forwards. None of them scored from play. Mm. Well, that's very hard to fathom because they've had a lot of chances. They've, they've had far more goal chances mm. than Watford have. And usually what happens is then when the, when the opposing team, Watford in this case, get a chance second, they'll probably stick it. Now, Cork are still in the game because these chances are popping up, but they haven't taken any. But like when they win at halftime, it's a Dennis Welch will be pulling his hero. Because just to think that in Tomás' time, that six forwards from Cork got no score from play. I've, I've, I've never seen it before in a Cork for 35 minutes. It never happened before. Modern hurling is, is heading almost like in the days of soccer in the bad old days. We could have nil all draws yet. Well, you talk Michael, forget about the soccer but you'd hope it's not going on the road of football when everybody's going back behind the ball and all, all of a sudden it's throwing the ball and there's a but kind of it, but there is it, a touch, there, there is a touch there? about yeah. it you know? yeah. and it is, I mean from a neutral point of view it is affecting the game of Harland certainly yes. we're not seeing the high scoring games we've it, seen in the past and uh, no. it, is, has a, it is having a big impact certainly. Well, certainly. Say, uh, in all our time coming to Thurless, we, you know we've always heard about the open space at Thurless and yeah. using the open space at yeah. Thurless they're all running after the ball, as Michael Dyden said there. Yeah. They're all over the right-hand side one. They're all over the left-hand side. You look out, there are huge tracts of land with nobody in it, not even a forward or a back. Like, if these are taxi tactics, they're crazy tactics, on both yeah. sides now, in fairness. Yes, yes, now, yes. the only good holding that has been done and the only good ball that has been laid in has been by Watford, funny enough. They've got about, I think, four, four, four or five chances of points from play, and they've taken them. Mm. You know, they've taken their chances. You know, the ball to Milan, ball into him, and at least he's a skillful forward, and when he gets a chance, he can put it over the bar. Mind you, if Cork had taken some of the goal chances they got in that match, we'd have a lot of scores in it. Yeah, this is the thing, like, mm. there's a lot of ball, the, it's got very slippy now, the pitch is a little bit of light rain, and the, the chance they're going to come. Now, here's one coming up from Cork, like, this is the ball coming in here. Tom Kinney, nice floating ball in, dangerous ball in across here, hops here for a sack, you know, he goes around here, full back does okay, holds him there, you think here, bang, net, a good shot but he puts it wide, side netting. Now he does the right thing here, but again, half a foul there, they make him go on the weak side, where he keep him on the left side, and he just but goes in the bad had, angle. He had to go across, he had, he had to go across at that stage, here's, the other side here's, here's goal, another yeah, one, yeah, here's yeah, another yeah. one put up, now here, mm. this is a great save, because Connors gets back for a flick here, mm. and we're doing, we're having, uh, Gerard Tomas killed him before, mm. and it's a great cornerback, look what he does here, gets mm. back, dives in, flick out wide, now that's a great save, that's that's worth six points, not three, because that should be in the back of it. And look what this is what Frankie Murphy does best of all. He pins the beautiful cross here, bound to nine McCarthy. He hesitates, and once he hesitates, the chance is gone. Now their chances but, but, of goals that, that was the very good. Get. That was very good defensive play again by Owen Murphy. Look here, I mean Neil McCarthy catches the ball and he gets the hurling. He's he the first time from us. And they're doing that very well in that full back line. You must give credit to them. Here's, here's, yeah, here's, here's the sack again. Well. But less, but it all shows is that the lack of skill that is in the cock forwards. Mm, mm. You know, if Milan gets those ch ch those chances, he would bury those chances. Coulson hasn't the skill, Asaki hasn't the skill, and Niall McCarthy hasn't that closing skill. They're great workers, they're good in the air, they have their attributes. But skill, the real wrist work and skill that you need in hurling is not part of it. And that's, that is the reason they didn't score the goals. It's, it's not for any other yes. reason. Mm. You mentioned John Milan there. It's interesting the tactic that Waterford were playing. They did again the same thing last week as well. Kind of more or less isolating Milan in there, sort of like as, as a yeah. striker. Yeah, you, yeah, you know. yeah. They're, they're withdrawing their two corner forwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Malumphy's playing away out of the midfield. They're getting the ball in low and fast into him. Mm. But there's the amount of space here. That's Kevin Moore now, a wing yeah. forward. There's yeah. the space. There's the space. Now, that's ideal for a corner. Now, he doesn't score this, but it's an ideal position for a, con for a, for a, for a forward when the ball comes like that. But I can't understand that's why co the cock backs haven't holding their positions. Yeah. If you look at Kilkenny, they'll that. hold their positions. The three full backs, the three half backs will stay there. And, and, and if, no matter where their men go, they'll be there and they'll clear the ball. That's why it's so hard to score against them. Now, Milan is the one Bryce back here. Look at the skill he has. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. you give that ball to Cross and you give it to Asaki, you give it to Nile McCarthy, they're going to be hooked. But he's not hooked. That is, that's the difference. They have scored four points for play. Several says uh, uh, Cock has scored none. Mm. That is, in a tight match like this, that is basically the difference. The well, difference uh, in well, people who have skill and people who, who haven't the real risk work that you need for the Munster Championship. Let's look at an incident that we saw in that first half. Now, it ended up more or less between Isaki and Liam Lawler, uh, the water for full back. A couple of other players got involved, first of all. Um, what do you make of this? Well, 
like the thing is, there was a little bit look at there's handbags too, first of all, Noel Connors here, just tipping around now. Saki comes in now. This is the trouble. Laura comes out, dunks him in the back, Saki put her heads Reacts, into another, yeah, yeah. and a little flick here, and you see get him down underneath, it looks like it. Now here there's a better angle here, and if he does, I think it's he to watch his watch Saki's hurry here. Watch his hurry. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's gonna be in trouble if this happens. But like yeah. it's hard to judge fully here. Look at here, just a little flick and down oh. you go. But I don't think it's it looks very bad. It looks bad for a Saki. But like yeah. he hopped up. Laura hopped up. Laura, I can <laughs> well he hopped up after his He did hop up and play off. It was have been slightly off target because Laura was laughing after it. And I tell yeah. you, if it was on target, you wouldn't be laughing. It was the helium <laughs> gas, I think, that he got as a result of that. OK, uh, well, just to tell you, the lights are on here in Thurles because it is getting uh, quite dark, obviously, at this hour of the evening, 8 o'clock. There will be extra time if this ends in uh, all square at the end of normal time. Hopefully that won't happen, but, uh, well, there are plenty of lights here in Thurles, so it'll be OK. We have another break to take. The second half of the Munster Harding final replay between Cork and Waterford still to come, so do stay with us. So this is the scene then at Semple Stadium in Thurles at halftime in the Munster Hurling final replay. The lights are on, the sky is overcast. We'll be ready for the second half very shortly. Now, the Sunday game live tomorrow features the Ulster Senior Football final between Tyrone and Monaghan. And we are live at half past one on RTE2. And don't forget to join us for a Sunday game special with Des Cahill, panel and invited studio audience to discuss all of the weekend's action. They'll also be reviewing the season so far and looking ahead to the concluding and hopefully exciting stages of Championship 2010. That's all at 9.30 on RTE2. OK, by the way, there's an attendance of 22,763 here for this replay this evening. OK, well, that promised to be an interesting evening tomorrow night on that Sunday game special. But back to this evening, earlier Claire McNamara spoke to Jerk Cunningham and Paul Flynn and they are with her for their halftime assessment. Yes, Michael, we're here uh, under the lights now at Semple Stadium. Jerk Cunningham, Cork finding it very hard to put scores on the board. Yeah, not a very great first half, Claire. You know, um, I think we've no forward on the scoreboard yet. Uh, we had two or three chances for goals. I think in the second half, unless we're going to get a goal or two, we could be in trouble. Paul Waterford on top like they were last week, four to the good, can they keep it up? Hopefully they can, of course, Claire. If, if Owen Kelly and the lads can, you know, maybe strike in a better quality ball to John Milan inside, I think it's well within Waterford to, to go on and, and carry out the victory. But the two big lads are gone inside now for Cork, uh, Isaacy and Michael Cousins, so, you know, that threat is going to be there as well. Okay, we will wait and see, Michael, that is the half-time view. All right, Claire, thank you very much indeed. The Cork team back out onto the field, just waiting for the Waterford team. Let's get a view from Cyril. Can Waterford push on now? They can once they hold the game plan, Michael. They're going to have to keep it tight. And Jerry said it might look nice, but that won't worry them if they can win. They have to shove on from here, but they can't lose the way like they did last week. Last week, they went up four or five points at this stage of the game and then lost, lost their shape completely and Cork hit them with two goals. They'll just have to hold, hold the, the, their game plan and stick to it. Tomas, Paddy O'Sullivan in for uh, Pat Organ there. Yeah, I, I suppose pa, um, Paddy was at some stage he was going to make his uh, he was going to come onto the team, you know. And uh, last week we saw it after half time, he brings a bit of bit, bit new pace into the forward line. Um, Patrick Organ didn't have a good first half there, certainly, and uh, you, you would feel, though, I certainly might, maybe would have kept him on the field because he's a man that has got the goals from Definitely. up to now, you know, Definitely. and, I mean, if he had got some of those chances in the first half, certainly maybe it would have been a different story, you know, but, I mean, Shane O'Neill going off, oh, Michael, is a huge last oh, now. Geez, yes. And it, it, it really is a test of character in the park now and see what strength and depth we have. Those guys who have been on the squad, been on the panel yeah. for the last while. Jared, very briefly. You know? The only straw we can claim to Michael is, so far it has been Groundhog Day. Same, you know, it's very, very same as last Sunday. So hopefully, last Sunday, great second half. Hopefully, we're hoping anyway, that it will be at least better than what we saw in the first half.